What's up wizards? We're going to be looking at something really cool today. We're going to be combining Zod with generics. You think you've been using Zod? Well, I'm about to blow your mind. Let's go. If you don't know what Zod is, let's start there. Zod is a schema validation library. It lets you create schemas out of objects and arrays and strings that you can then use to validate data. For instance, this maybe user will fail because it doesn't have the name property. If we give it a name property, then it'll pass and we'll be able to access ID and name here. One cool feature of Zod is it lets you infer types from your runtime structures. By using z.infer, we can pass in the type of user schema and end up with the user type. This means that instead of having to declare this twice, we can just infer it from the runtime structure. You should start to think of Zod schemas as the source of your types, and we can start to use them in generic functions for all sorts of cool applications. Let's start by making a login form schema. This is going to validate that the email is actually an email and that the password is a string. Let's imagine we have a generic hook called useForm. I'm doing this in a react way, but you could use any framework for this. My plan here is that I'll be able to to use use form by passing in a schema. And I'll be able to pass on submit to my form element. Inside the on submit, I want to pass the values using the schema and then call an actual on submit function with the passed values. This means the on submit callback that I pass to use form is always going to get the accurate values. By doing this, it means that I don't need to repeat all that validation logic for each form I do. There's obviously some extra stuff I need to add here in terms of runtime stuff, but let's imagine that this is all I need. Let's dive into actually doing the type signature. We have a bunch of any's here. I'm going to add a generic to use form called t values. We know that the on submit has to capture these t values. These t values are going to represent the thing that we get back in our on submit. So I'm going to add them here. Now, if we wanted to, we could pass this in as a type argument to use form. And whatever I add into here will get inferred into the values down here. I can make that happen by using z.schema and I pass it the t values that we're going to expect. Now this is erroring because this doesn't match the shape of login form schema because login form schema has email password instead of ID and name. We can make this happy by changing it to email and password. But how great would it be if we didn't have to pass the type argument. Well, we don't. We can delete this and now the values are being inferred from the shape of the login form schema. If I add a new field here, it gets pulled through into the values. To remove this final any, I should change it to unknown and I'll add new values here as the result of the pass and I'll pull in those new values to the on submit. With a simple z.object in line, I then get different inference based on what I pass in. Your head is probably spinning with the possibilities, but let's keep going. Let's imagine we're building an express app where we have a couple of different routes and we listen on port 3000. Let's imagine that we want to accept an ID on the query params, for instance, like this. Right now, ID is either a a string or an array of strings or undefined. If there isn't an ID, we want to return a 400 and send back an error message. We can make this flow a lot smoother with Zod. We first create a function that returns another function. We want to call it like this and then use the something handler inside here. We want to pass the make get endpoint our implementation and we can type that like this. We can remove all of the manual error handling because we're going to do that inside this function, which is the function returned from calling make get endpoint. Let's make a schema as the first argument of make get endpoint and then pass that down here. Inside the endpoint, we're going to use safe path to pass the query. If the query is not successful, then we return a status of 400 and send back an error message that Zod churns out for us. Then we call the original callback that the user handed to us. This is great because we can now access ID, but you'll notice ID is still typed to string or whatever or undefined. So it's not picking up any inference from Zod yet. So let's add a generic back here, pass that into our z.schema. Then we're going to pass the T query into the request. We have to pass it as the fourth argument because request actually takes multiple generics. And since we don't care about res body and rec body, we can default them to any. Now, ID is typed as string. And if we add a name property, it's going to be typed as string and we're going to get autocomplete on it. There's one issue here, which is we have a really long error inside here. The reason for this error is that this request is not actually assignable to this request. So I'm going to patch that over with an as any. Oh God, an as any, you're going to be freaked out. But in this case, it's warranted because we know more than TypeScript does about the inference. We know that the difference between this request and this request has been checked by these lines of code here, but TypeScript doesn't know that. So when you know more than TypeScript, especially inside highly generic functions, don't be scared to use any. This pattern gives you so much type safety. For instance, here I'm getting an error because message is not defined on the object. I can mark it here as optional if I want to. Zod is at its best when it acts as a source for all of your types. And you can use these functions to make sure you don't even need to define types because you can pass the Zod schema directly and it will infer the types from there. If you've enjoyed this video, then you should look at my Zod course. It's totally free and it acts as a really good introduction to what Zod can do. Thank you so much for watching along. I'll have another video here for you to look at and a channel for you to subscribe to here. It's Sunday afternoon here. I'm going to take a little drink of tea and then I'm going to think about my next video. Or, you know, actually watch some football or something. And I'll see you very soon.